23 or so of you? Yeah, 23. <laughs> 23, or the platform of the PDP alone. Uh, just by way of a uh, little bit of introduction, uh, Dubo is a lawyer by training, graduated, at, uh, graduated, graduated from the Abadu Bello University, Zaria, in 1985, uh, uh, called to the Nigerian Bar, 1986 or so? Yeah. Uh, he's attended so many other institutions uh, after that. Uh, I think he has also been an active member of the Bar as well. Uh, let me just leave it there. I think you are very active too in the oil and gas sector as well. well <laughs> I would say you are a major player, one of the active players there. Good, Good to morning. see you. Thank you. Good morning. Ben. All right. I said there are 23 of you aspiring to take over from uh, Dr. in 2015. That's on the platform of the PDP alone. Yeah. Uh, what, what is responsible for this high interest in that office? Well, I think it just shows that um, there's a lot of capacity in River State, and uh, PDP is the party. C capacity in what sense? Well, 23 persons all, all qualified. You know, any one of any one of us could be governor. So it shows that uh, there's serious capacity in River State. Um, of course, I would like to say that they're all yearning you know, to serve um, the states. No, that there's uh, anything special in that uh, office that all of you are after. Well, I wouldn't know. For me, right, you know, the creed that animates me is how I can uplift, you know, the, the lives of my people. And I think that that's, you know, what works for everybody else. Yeah, but the, the PDP is not having its uh, smooth this time around, or like previous experiences. What, what is responsible for this crisis, so to say, particularly in the reverse chapter of the PDP? Well, PDP is a very, is a very large, you know, uh, party, the largest in Africa, and then uh, River State is uh, very important, you know, in this country. And then, of course, you know, we don't have, we don't have um, a governor in the party right now. The one we had left us, and then went, went, went to the APC. Left you or you drove him? <laughs> well, Which one? well, he left us. You know, we don't drive people in that party. Is that so? No, we don't drive people. Don't Where did that start? It's a, large, it's a large family. Some of us are unable right, to stand the heat, but um, in every large family, you should expect you know, these things to happen. And what we have seen over the years is that uh, PDP, in its listening, maintains a 360 degrees radius. So at some point, the issues you know, shall be resolved. I don't see why any, anybody would want to leave you know, a massive party, a party that is very well concerned about Nigeria, and the party that has done well for this country over the years. I wouldn't see why anybody would want to leave. Well, well, individual choices, I guess. Isn't that part of the problem with the PDP and in the PDP is inability to manage crisis? Well, you know, some people put their interests above that of the party and above sometimes part of this, you know, um, that of the state. And those are the ones, you know, that will cry that um, the party has not been able to resolve the issues. But anybody who is concerned about teamwork, who is concerned about the party, who is concerned about you know, the state. If you don't put your interests above, above all else, I think that you know, the PDP right has served all of those persons well. The ones that leave the party are the ones who put their interests above all else, honestly. And that's just been the truth. Don't forget that even you at the moment, you are up in arms against the party. Well, not. You know, we are, uh, we are agitating. In a family, you know, you need to shout. Uh, sometimes, my father said, when I was growing up, that if you do not say that I am, nobody will say thou art. So what we're trying to do now is to say that, hey, I'm here. These are the issues. Look at the issues, you know, as you have always done. Sometimes, you know, your father may not uh, be abreast with all the issues that have happened in the home, you know. So you need to tell him, and then tell him in a way that he understands. That's what we're doing. So we're we've been talking, we're still talking, and hopefully, hopefully, like we've always done, we shall resolve the issues in Riverside as well. You said much earlier that the, a government that you elected in uh, 2011 yeah. le left you, the government left you. Uh, has that in a way altered the political calculations in the River State? Oh, yes. Well, um, it, it won't be that easy anymore. You know, um, River State was predominantly PDP. You know, um, 2003, 2007, 1999 was a little difficult. 2003, the party had consolidated, you know, immensely. 2007, it was just the only party. 2011, we returned almost 2 million votes to Mr. President, and that was even the governor had about 1.3, almost 1.4 million votes. You know, that tells you that everybody in PDP is predominantly, everybody in the is predominantly PDP. 
However, with um, uh, the governor, you know, living with the mandate that we gave to him, uh, and uh, with the amount of resources that he has, you know, the, the opposition party have become formidable in Labour State now. We won't, we, won't, we won't deny that. What is very clear is that the PDP is still very popular. You know, if we put our act together, right, I mean, it's, it shall be difficult. Not even uh, a hundred, you know, uh, governors, Rotimi Amechi, will be able to defeat the PDP in Labour State. Once we put our act together, and we're going to do that. Once you put your act together, and that's the big one. It's very key. It's very, it's very key that we do that. Yes. Very key. Um, Let me get your perspective uh, in the PDP crisis that is on. What do you think the problem with the PDP is? Some of some people have the opinion that the party is being hijacked. Uh, some people believe that the party executive itself is lame duck in that you have virtually maybe one or two people running the party affairs or taking decisions in the name of the party. There is the issue of whether there is actually, there should be a zoning system, a zoning formula that should uh, favor maybe one of two uh, senatorial districts that have been disadvantaged for some time. I don't know. Let me get your perspective to all of these issues. Well, I'm happy, you know, like you've uh, observed, right, the issues are broad. You know, and they've, and they've been on, you know, for a fairly long period of time. I think uh, more than a year, you know, I, I should say. And uh, it began from, you know, the court issues, and then of course we had, you know, a court judgment that brought in the Felix Ubuwa led, you know, PDP escrow in the state. And um, that judgment, as a matter of fact, affected just the offices of the chairman and that of secretary. So yes, I mean, Felix Ubuwa and the BB Awards are the secretary. Yes, are duly elected, and of course, you know, we, we accept them as leaders of the party. Um, there's no gains that I wouldn't be party to anything, anything to the contrary, because I'm a lawyer. Once the court says that, that's the position, that's the position, until uh, the contrary. Even if you don't yes. agree. Well, I don't have to agree. You know, you don't have to favor me. That's why, you know, I've, I've always said, we have to, we have to abide by the principles that we have subscribed to when we join the party. So, and the party interest should always be, you know, paramount. We should always consider that. However, some of us have forgotten that PDP, right, uh, has a very large umbrella that can accommodate all of us, you know, and that accommodation is always better than exclusion. And, you know, I think that there has always been a, you know, a design, right, to ensure that, you know, uh, one, of, one of us, one of us emerged, you know, some sort of preference. So every activity of the party in the last uh, one or two years, you know, has been done in a cagey manner, I would say, in a cagey manner, right, to... Uh, to produce that outcome, and that is why a lot of us are complaining, you know. Before, and, uh, and then, of course, the other issue of um, of zoning, yeah. you know, and rotation. It is not whether or not, or not I, as a person, you know, uh, subscribe to zoning. You know, what is important at this point is whether or not the PDP constitution provides for zoning and rotation of elective and uh, appointive offices. And what's the answer? Yeah, if, the, if the party is paramount. The party is supreme. All of us have subscribed to the constitution of that party. Therefore, whatever is contained in our provisions, in our constitution, must bind all of us. So if the PDP provides for zoning and rotation of elective offices, then everybody you know, in, the, in the party is bound by that. We cannot, you know, get the benefit of the blood umbrella. And, you know, not... Um, act according to the dictates, you know, of that large umbrella. That's why we have, you know, the crisis that we have in the PDP today. We need to do what the PDP says. I'll be the first to tell you, Benga, that, you know, ethnicity or religion, you know, may, it may, may inspire. It may even contain the ultimate truth. But whether by God's will or in consequence of the simple laws of biology and, and physics, ethnicity, no religion, has never been a sufficient principle for running a successful state. However, if our forebears have over the years devised an ingenious method mm -hmm. that works for us, that you know guarantees our coexistence, that guarantees that we live harmoniously amongst, you know, in a in a plural state like you know, like rivers, it has served us so well. We can't jettison it because we want to protect the interests of an individual. And that's just the issue. You know, and it doesn't matter who that individual is. Even if it is Dumo Little Bricks, right, I will apply the same principles. You know, I will insist on the same things. Because we don't, we, we don't have to throw away something. Those sentiments, you know, that have held the fabric of our state together must, must be respected. They've served us so well. 
you know. And I begin to ask, at what point right, do we begin to consider the interest of the people? When do we begin to put the state first? When do we begin to put the people first? You know, and then subordinate our individual interest to that of to that of the collective. That's basically the issue right now in River State, you know. And those are the things that I've talked about from the one, the things that will stand for, you know. And I'm sure, right, that you know we, sh we shall achieve that. So, so uh, you are not playing much on that ethnic card or the the balancing of zoning zoning. No, card. there's you know there's nothing ethnic. There's nothing ethnic in what we're trying to do, right? We are we, we are a plural society. Yes, and, our, and as a our, you need to be sensitive to such things. Precisely, precisely, because those sentiments are very high. Even in, even in America, I've always said to people, after the Confederation Wars you know, in America, America became deeply divided between North and South. And what they did, every time they had a candidate for president from the South, they balanced it with, the, with someone from the North. And that happened until 1992, when Bill Clinton ran for office, you know, and then the young man from Arkansas chose someone you know, from Tennessee to southern states. At that time, you felt that America had become so so united. Mm. That so that the father could even, uh, oh, oh the yes. son could even succeed the oh, father. Oh yes, you know that America had, you know, had grown beyond, you know, all of those prejudices. Yeah. We don't have that here. And what I, what I beg is that we should struggle to avoid these crippling legacies of bigotry and injustice. You know, we must, we must find a way to, to be a brother's keeper. You know, if you can't love your neighbor as you love yourself, why would you want to aspire to govern that neighbor? Right? And then you know that if you don't get the politics right, you would never get the governance right. That's part of the issue we are facing in River State. We need to get the politics right. And the way we are playing it now shows that we are not, we are not prepared to get that right. And if we don't get it right, we are going to have another government that we shall complain from day one. You know, we have become so polarized in River State. So divided right down the middle. And Why is it difficult from? for the PDP to listen to this? The PDP in River State, first of all, and the PDP at, at the national level. And how much of a blame would you apportion to the leader of the party, the national leader of the party, in all of this, himself being somebody from, uh, from himself being somebody from that, uh, that side, who also should be conversant uh, with this, this sentiment that you have talked about? Well, you know, um, the party at the state, if you ask me as a lawyer, right, it's uh, composed of two persons right now, legally, legally. Although we have officers, you know, that uh, have been put there working, you know, but legally, as a lawyer, speaking as a lawyer, and you know, and I like to, I like to mention all that because I'm a very law-abiding person, and that's what the provision says. You know, it's run by, it's run by two persons, and of course, I think that they already have an interest, and um, they've shown that hand. Uh, they are ordinarily nice, nice persons, you know, but I think that in this particular they have not been able to put uh, the interest of the party, the interest of the state above their personal interest. That's about, you know, what is wrong at the state level. And of course, uh, we, we won't be able to, to get much out of that. And we have gone to the center, the National Working Committee. We have put these issues before the National Working Committee. We believe these issues have been addressed. They set up, you know, an integration um, committee that went around the states. We came and we had our there in Abuja. Even when we came and we, we had issues, you know, at that, uh, at that material time. Yesterday we met again with the integration committee, and we believe that well, that um, they are looking at the issues dispassionately, in a way that uh, ensures that you know we have justice, because they have to balance the competing interests of peace, you know, justice you know, and security. All of that is very important. They are doing that. Now the leader of the party. Uh, is, I'm sure he's aware of the issues, you know, and he's not late. I'm sure he's looking at those issues. He's always done that. He's always done that, and he, you know, and he gets it right in the end. You know, he w he knows what he would do. What is right? He's from Rivers, so he understands our geopolitics. Uh, he's not. He doesn't have the liberty of an Obasanjo or perhaps an Abdul Salami who could claim that. Well, I don't know what's going on there. From old um, uh, uh, Rivers, you know, a man from Baza. I mean, he grew up in those. Uh, 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 sentiments, you know, so you understand them very clearly, you know, and, uh, you know, well, you know, you've got to be very careful, even as a leader, when you have issues amongst your children as a father, you need, you need to be careful, so that, I mean, it's not so much what you say or what you do, but how you do it and how you say it, and I'm sure that uh, this president who has always done things in a very elegant manner would, you know, address this issue in that same manner. Do, uh, some of your colleagues believe that the PDP National Secretary that uh, has gone too far 
in in his support and bias for a particular position such that he cannot be trusted to do the right thing. Well, there has um, been allegations that of recent the national chairman had come to Port Harcourt. He had seemingly endorsed one candidate. He has seemingly said that it is you or nobody else, and all of this this thing. Well, in truth, you know. Um, we didn't know that our national chairman was coming. Most of us didn't know that our national chairman was coming. And therefore, most of us didn't, you know, uh, participate in that in that in that welcome, you know, uh, of uh, of our national chairman. And then some of the things that are reported that well, people have people have said that uh, for me will be hearsay. Mm. Uh, I do not think that he had endorsed uh, anybody. He knows the dangers of doing that. Uh, he's a well-grounded person, <coughs> you know. Uh, and it's done well for us in the short period that he became national chairman. So I do not think that knowing how volatile rivers it is, he will go, you know, and endorse a particular uh, candidate. I, I don't think that that's uh, something that our national chairman will do very easily. So I, I don't, I don't want to say that that happened. I don't also want to think that, that means you are also disbelieving media reports of that vis of those visits. I don't, <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't think so. You know, even, even the reports I had, right, they didn't say that uh, I endorse you. It just says that, well, look. When you raise about this other, you say, can it go? No, leader of the party. You know, we must understand. As leader of the party. We must understand that at that time, at that time, yes. right, the supervising minister of education then was not an aspirant. He was leader of the party. Are you sure um, he has not always been an aspirant? Well, you know, legally, legally he wasn't. He <laughs> wasn't. He was, he was in service, so he wasn't. And then at the time the national chairman went to Padagoda, he was leader of the party. And national chairman Powers felt, well, he had done well, carry on. You know, that's how I would like to interpret, you know, what the one Carigo national chairman did. Uh, well, yes, I don't think that Carigo meant, well, you know, uh, you're, the, you're the one who have endorsed you and all that. And uh, if that had happened, we would have fought that, you know, uh, very seriously. And not uh, be deceived into going to spend about 40 million, like picking nomination forms. We would have told Rivers for what the issues are. But I, I can tell you, that um, those issues have not been resolved. I mean, I'd like to remind us here, you know, because um, this is a wonderful country, you know. Mm. President um, Olusegun Obasanjo said something. He said he has two sets of enemies. One are his personal enemies. The other are the enemies, are the enemies of Nigeria. Mm. All those who oppose Totem, perhaps because they didn't like him as a person, they are his personal enemies. But all those who supported Totem are the enemies of Nigeria. And those ones, you know, the ones you have difficulty forgiving. Now, if you look at the events in River State too, I'm sure there are some points. Uh, the former supervising minister for education will say that all those who are urging him on, you know, uh, to run to run to run for office, to run for this particular office are not people who love who love the state. Because they know what what it is. They know what the situation is. You know, and then they are insisting on that, and perhaps that will uh, that will inform his reluctance. He didn't go to pick, a, you know, to pick a nomination form. Some persons went and got nomination form and brought to him. So perhaps he's under pressure. You know, I, I, I think you believe, that you believe that. I think he's a, I think he's a gentleman. He was home when, when you, you know when, when some persons when some persons yes. disregarding disregarding the interests of their states decided to go and you know who'd wink more or less. You know, and this provincial minister into saying that yes, yes, he's going to run. I'm sure at some point he will look at them. I say, well, these are the persons I can't forgive. These are the enemies of Rivers, and I can't forgive them. The same way, Pastor said he wouldn't forgive those who supported Totem. Those who didn't support it. Those, those, those who supported. No, those who supported Totem. He says that the enemies of Nigeria. Those ones he can't forgive. Those who didn't support are his personal enemies. They didn't support Pastor because they didn't like him. <laughs> Therefore, right, he had the capacity to forgive them because the offense was against him. But those who supported Totem, the offense was against the country, okay. and he would never forgive them. So those who are urging him on now, the minister, I'm sure at some point he will look at them and say, all of you are enemies of River State. You know? Mm -hmm. So, because I think he's a gentleman. He didn't go to pick his donation from people went, spent their money, got donation. He was home. We saw it on the, I think he didn't carry it. He mm. was home when a few persons. And as a politician, I'm surprised that as a politician, this is your interpretation of that. And I will ask you, who does not know the trick of putting a piece of uh, meat in his mouth and in... Two minutes, you open your mouth, the meat has disappeared. Magic. A lot Anybody can perform that magic. Oh, yes. Well, a lot happens, you know. Well, whether it was um, contrived, whether it was, uh, it was orchestrated, you know, I want to give it the, the interpretation that, you know, they meant, you know, to give to it. 
I'm putting myself in their position now. What do they want Nigerians to believe? They want Nigerians to believe that he wasn't interested, that some persons got the form, came to his house, you know, and said, please, you're the only one who can save the state now. Come out and save the state. That's what you know, they wanted us to believe. So now, working in that belief, working in that orchestration, if it is an orchestration, I will say that it only shows that this progressive minister is on He was reluctant. He didn't even bother to go to the secretary. Even the president went to the secretary and obtained his nomination form. That shows interest. You want to be, you want to be governor or president, that you must first show the interest. Mm. You know? But do you, do you think he has also earned that, that uh, if it was orchestrated, do you think he has also earned it? Uh, in the sense that uh, when the going was tough, he was probably the, the generalismo that was leading the onslaught against somebody that you could consider his, his friend, uh, his caseman from uh, almost the same, uh, okay, from two lo different local governments, but from the same senatorial uh, zone, somebody who could more or less be considered as his first cousin or so. Don't you think that if he's been endorsed, it was a reward for all of that gallantry. Well, and the rest of you, 2022, 20, should actually queue behind him. You know, uh, I wish it were as simple as that. Uh, yes, you know, the, the PDP had passed through a very difficult phase. Uh, you, you know, it's not an easy thing when the governor of the state, right, you know, leaves the party to a different party. A lot of, you know, vacuum is created. And then persons move to fill that vacuum. You know, we all knew that we had to protect the party, and we all came out in our numbers. But somebody had to lead that struggle. Somebody had to be the face of that struggle. You know, and the minister was the highest-ranking political officer for the party at that time. So naturally, you know, he was leader. Now, I wouldn't be quick, you know, to say that, well, that he hasn't worked or he didn't do so much. He did. We all made our contributions. But yes, I, I can concede, you know, that he did have more than we did. But he was doing all of that, right, in the collective in the interest of the party and in the interest of the state. He wasn't doing that because, you know, he was going to be the beneficiary, the sole beneficiary of the struggle of everybody. We needed to take PDP to the nooks and crannies of the state and we all did that. You know, so this cannot be a reward. You cannot because something like that happened or because he made the more contribution than everybody else, you know that we should yield that office to him. I said, that when there are other sentiments, when there are constitutional issues, things that have been pronounced, you know, written by the party, as yardstick, you know, for measuring what should be done at different points in time. And I asked Nigerians this simple question, and it must interest all Nigerians. Because, you see, the River State is a microcosm of Nigeria. So, whatever is good for Nigeria is good for River State. And they've done something in Akwaibom, They've done the same thing in, 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 in Adamawa, right? So there should be no reluctance to do it in River State. But we must also ask ourselves this. How much work can Governor Siraki Dixon of Bayesa State do in PDP, or perhaps for Nigeria, including perhaps going to Borno and physically fighting the Boko Haram insurgents and killing all of them? That PDP will say in 2019, because I know that Jonathan shall be re-elected, in 2019, that Siraki Dixon should succeed Jonathan. And you think that this country will be the same? It's the same scenario. So it doesn't matter how much Dixon does. It doesn't matter the amount of work he does in PDP for the party. Even the party was in desire and he was the only one who put it together. Right? He should not. He should not, in the course of doing that at any point, think, the ambition that think, he can succeed think, yes, that he can succeed Jonathan. You know, so that's, that's why you know, I, I, I want to believe. That honourable minister, right? It's been honourable. His minister has just, um, you know, been also recognised by the federal government with um, CON. With the CON. Is it CON or CON? CON. CON. And that's, you know, that's, that's quite honourable. I took um, an advertorial congratulating him. I think that, you know, if the president of Nigeria says that this is someone who is honourable, then he is honourable. Therefore, I would like to look at all of those persons who went, you know, to wake him up from, from home and said, look, you have to come, you know, and run this thing. You know, they've also made the argument that he's the only one who can defeat Rotimi Amici. You know, that is why he's the one that we should put forward. But I ask, what election is Rotimi Amici contesting? Is he running for governor again? We don't, our laws don't allow that. So Rotimi Amici is not a candidate for the, the governorship elections in River State. You know? So we must do what is right. I also agree there are some points, you know, 
political parties, you know, do what is expedient rather than what is right. If you think that, well, that what is expedient wouldn't get you the objective, you could contrive something and then do, you know, what is expedient. But in this situation in River State, when what is right, which is how to win the next elections, right, can, can be done by doing what, by, by putting any one of us. Mm. For instance, well, 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 what well, is well, the people who are behind uh, the former minister? Are people who ordinarily should be sharing the same, who actually should be the apostles of the same sentiments that you have been espousing here? Eh? People like former Senator Adawari Pepu. Um, I can't, I can't recall names. So many Ijo leaders, Calabari leaders, uh, people from Ogoni land who are themselves at the forefront of the weekend for governor uh, campaign in River State. I, I honestly wouldn't know what drives people, you know, uh, but I think that you know, what is right is always right. There are no two ways about it. You know, uh, as a young man you know, driving uh, from uh, my place of work to where I used to stay in, in, uh, in Ikeja, I used to see an inscription that honey by whatever name called shall still be sweet. So what is true is always true. And what is wrong is always wrong. So I wouldn't know what drives, you know, some people into taking certain actions that they've taken. You know, I'll leave that, you know, uh, to themselves, you know, and the God that they serve. But when something is wrong, right, it also, I don't know how you want to change it. We can't put our individual interests above the interests of the state. This is what we have known all the years. This is what, you know, have served us well. Because we are a plural society, our forebears took time. They devised this ingenious method that have worked so well for all of us over the years. But have guaranteed our unity. I guarantee that we live harmoniously. Why would we want to jettison it? Why would an individual's interest be, you know, be paramount, be above the interest of the state and all of us? I don't see that. And some persons, like you say, you know, are pushing it. And I hope that at some point the Honorable Minister will look at them and say, I'm not sure that you are friends of this state. Borrowing from, you know, the example the of... Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the PDP conducted its World Congresses last weekend in River State. The PDP said it was a success, but some of you aspirants boycotted. Uh, yesterday there were two different events that took place in Lagos. First, we addressed the press conference. We were co speakers there. Uh, you also had a peace meeting uh, with a uh, respected Ijoni Dutch, Redwood Clark. Yeah, it was at those events. First, let's take the news conference addressed by the group of aggrieved governorship aspirants in River State, uh, and then, of course, the meeting at uh, Chief Edwin Clark's house. Nobody's aspiration can be greater than where it comes from. Uh, to be it is bigger than the aspirations of all the aspirants, you know, put together. Uh, and ultimately, what is best for River State is what every aspirant should pursue, you know. And they're taking a the position, they're going to look at what is best for River State and make the announcement in, in due time, maybe by tomorrow or a day after. Particularly about the time uh, factor, it is very costless. I don't think that we have the time now. You know, so this is expected in any, any, any large family. Now, when you know that their family is responsive, is the actions that they take in trying to resolve the issues, you know, that arise out of, you know, normal cause of family dealings. You know. Quickly, put together something that, that shall work for River State. And I think that in a day or two, let's say Mother 24 for eight hours, we shall have a report from them. Okay, that was that was one of the two events. There was that was actually later yesterday evening. That was after your press conference. Uh, like I said, we were also at the press conference. Let's see if uh, we we'll get that material now, so that we just uh, do the two together. Uh, okay, I'm told that that one is not ready. But basically the same thing. In the early, earlier in the day yesterday.
you address a news conference, your complaint is that uh, the World Congresses were anything but free and fair. Uh, it was hijacked, this and that, and all of that. Can you? The, okay, I'm told it's ready now. All right, let's let, let's take it uh, so that I don't b uh, bother you too much. To be corrected and insist that there was no congresses, there were no congresses held in River State. We call on the working committee to cancel the flawed River State world delegate election and disband the Dr. Gambo led electoral committee. Three, that Barista Yeson Wiki should be disqualified as a governorship aspirant for compromising and corrupting the processes leading to the world delegate election and bringing the PDP to disrepute in River State and the whole nation. We call on the National Working Committee to order fresh re-registration of members of the party in order to produce authentic party membership registers for River State PDP. So you want me to say that we are going to go to APC? Nothing like that. We will stay in PDP, fight in PDP, and win in PDP. We are not going nowhere because that is the attitude of Nigeria that have made the nation to stay where it is today. You become dumb. You, you don't just say nothing, see nothing, and then you perpetuate every evil. We are going to remain in PDP, fight in PDP, and win in PDP. Uh, Professor Watte, there is one of the governorship aspirants. You were also present at that event. Now, very serious demands you are making of your party, the PDP, cancel the uh, World Congresses, uh, disqualify Barrister Chivies of Wiki. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, then, of course, we are saying that the, the first exercise that should have preceded the World Congress is the validation of membership, which wasn't done. We saw a Bayesa, even President Gulag Jonathan, had to be revalidated as a member of the PDP, issued a fresh membership uh, card on Saturday before the World Congress. Why was, it, why, was it this, why was this not done in reverse? Well, you know, uh, <coughs> Menga, it's been very, very unfortunate. You know, one unfortunate event after another unfortunate event uh, had happened in River State. <coughs> we had complained, but we hope that, you know, this issue uh, will be resolved, that there's still time. We didn't have, after Rotimi Amiti left the party, because, of course, you know, he is the governor and he's in government. Most of the PDP ward chairmen, you know, and secretaries, and then the councillors and, and the rest that left with him, left with the PDP registrars, you know. Therefore, the very first step that we would have taken, those of us interested in growing the party, you know, was to begin a fresh registration of PDP members, so that we have an authentic PDP register. But, you know, for some reason, right, I don't, I, the, the current ESCO, of um, you know the, the chairman and the secretary of the state is unwilling. It's unwilling, you know, to do that. Perhaps because you know they bother about the outcome. Uh, I wouldn't know what has driven about. We've, we've insisted. We've, we've kept asking. When are we going to have the opportunity, right, of registering teeming number of persons who love the PDP, who want their names in the register, who want to hold a party card? When are we going to? Most of us don't have new party cards. We don't have new party cards. You know, and therefore our complaint was that the events leading to the World Congress and the World Congress itself were flawed because there was no authentic party register. The law also says that you know that before the Congresses, the registers ought to be displayed. So we had none; nothing was displayed, and in almost everywhere, you know, nothing happened. You know, so we have brought these issues before the National Working Committee. Why couldn't the, the five-man panel set up by the National Secretariat? as in the case of all other states as well, to oversee the World Congress. Were these issues brought before them? I also noticed that there you were calling for even the disqualification of the, of the members of we the... We didn't, we didn't even see them. They didn't come to Portacourt? Well, I, I, I don't know. They probably came, you know, in the cover of, of, of the dark and left, you know, before it was done. We didn't see anybody. You know, though we had complained about the composition, you What's know? wrong with the composition? Well, we had complained. I mean, and 
there has not been any, any, any denial. The chairman of you know, the committee is the current deputy executive secretary of UBEC and was appointed. That's Dr. Gambo. Dr. Gambo. You know. So a lot of us felt that this is not someone who would come and do what you know, would be just and fair. I had to cover it up. He didn't even show up. We had complained about the secretary. We had complained about the, the entire composition. You know, but we didn't. We did that, if all of that, right, would build into insignificance, when you know that right, the real issues that ought to have preceded that have not even been addressed. You know, they set up, you know, an integration committee, and these complaints were made. We have not even heard the position of that committee. So that committee should say what should happen in River State. You know, with a note of finality, or made the recommendations to the National Working Committee, and then of course, National Working Committee of our party shall tell us what their, their current position is. Based on that, the rest of us would know what to do. You know, but there's been some sort of silence. But I, I know that um, nothing is lost yet. We still can put our act together, write these rounds, you know, and move forward as a very strong, very strong party. Okay, let me read some tweets because this is an interactive program. Let me take some tweets at this stage. Let's start uh, entertainment says, among aggrieved PDP candidates, you seem to be the most objective yet calm. Why are some of you visibly irritated and spitting fire? <laughs> well, I think it's individual conduct. I also probably agree with part of that tweet. You appear very cool about, uh, about the issues and uh, <laughs> not unnecessarily agitated. Uh, Ajabo Emo says, you can't get justice under the umbrella. Join hand to remove those that uh, fail to guarantee us uh, fresh air, as promised in 2011. That's <laughs> that's how that it was. Okay, what you want to hear that advice? Yeah, well, that's a very that's a very, <laughs> that's a very tall dream. You know, it's a very tall dream. We are in, we are in the PDP. Don't you think there is some sense in the advice? No, 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 no. Well, you see, the, the PDP, right? You know, is a is a great party. They will. Yeah find a way to resolve these issues. And this president is done tremendously well. Works more than 20 hours every day for, for Nigerians. Yes. You know, why shouldn't, I, why shouldn't I support him? You know? And then, uh, sometimes I say that we should take politics out of the things that we say. You know? So if we, if we balance reason with truth, we, we need to always do that. You know, reconcile reason with truth. So that the arguments, you know, that may follow shall be slim and just. <laughs> you now have to take this is out of what you know Nigerians, we persons who are interested in the office, you know, the president are saying, mm -hmm. and go outside of here and listen to what people who have no interest in our politics are saying. So you will take the World Bank, you will take the Bretton Woods institutions. What are they saying about this president? What have they said, you know, that he has done, you know, to, to poverty elevation in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. you know, what are they saying that this country is going to be? Today we are the largest uh, economy in Africa the largest economy in Africa, and then of course, you know, the Britain Wood institutions have coined an acronym they call MINT, and I'm sure you know that, you know, MINT represents Mexico, Indonesia, Nigeria, and Turkey. Yeah. And they are saying that these are the strong emerging markets, and all of that is happening under this president. The World Bank says that going by current growth rates, by 2050, Nigeria shall be the 13th largest economy in the world, ahead of Turkey, ahead of Italy, ahead of Canada. It's happening under President Gulagi Billy Jonathan. And you say a man who has done this much, given all the issues, this sustained, sustained uh, conspiracy against him and against all of us Nigerians, with all of these insurrections going on here and there, and he has been able to keep calm and, you know, producing this much for all of us, mm. that we shouldn't support him? Suppose it happens that in the 2015 election, of February 14, 2015, the people of Rivers, that is, if the PDP is not able to perfect his act, is there a possibility that people of Rivers may, okay, is our son, vote for him to be president again? But as far as governor, governorship is concerned, let us vote our conscience. Is that the most possibility of such a scenario? No, when usually, you know, when, you know, when there's a wrong and uh, people feel very, 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 very injured, there's usually consequences. Mm. There's usually consequences. But I can't I can tell you that um, PDP, you know, is aware of all of that. And the issues will be resolved. PDP will resolve the Even issues. Even with the serious breaches that we have seen. Oh, well, yes. I mean, they, well, once they get the participants, you know, to agree on what is right, 
and the party decides to do what is right. All of this if that doesn't happen, happen. It's going to Professor Water says, it has if we remain in the PDP, you are not going to leave the PDP. You will remain in the PDP. Nobody, even if you don't have your way. Nobody is leaving the PDP. I am not leaving the PDP. I am not leaving the PDP at all. And I don't think that any, anybody is interested in leaving the party. How much of uh, assurances did you get from uh, Chief Edward Clark at a meeting with him yesterday? Well, you know, he's always um, been very outspoken. He's uh, a very concerned uh, leader of our, of our region. And then he's tried to intervene when there are issues across, you know, across the region. And then um, we trust in his, in his capacity and in, in his willingness to always do that which is right, you know. And then I'm sure that we'll be able to get a broad, you know, coalition of leaders to agree on what is right. And then when that position is taken, everybody uh, will come under that, uh, that, uh, that umbrella, that succor that, we, that shall be provided. All right, I went uh, with some tweets as well. Uh, Benga, hi, long time. I'm a bit confused with there be governorship election in River State in February. There's a big security scare now. Uh, Rivers is top on the list. Uh, do you have uh, do you have fears that something could go awry? There? Well, you know, it takes um, it takes the leaders to, to try and address most of these issues. And then, as leaders, we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to the people. We owe it to our states to insist. You know that whatever is done is done with utmost civility, and uh, these are fears that are, that, are, that are entertained. But I can tell you that there shall be no such breaches. There shall be no such breaches. Olad mm. Davis, says, Lulu, you are very, you are well articulated and marshally your grievance well. With guys like you, the umbrella is a good cover for River State. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's leave it there uh, and just say. Uh, well, I will have to do that. Let me not cross that very thin line now. Uh, there's the ban on campaigns, and so I cannot say what will you bring to the table if you become if all of this get resolved, and uh, you probably get the nose of majority of delegates to be the PDP flag bearer. Would that amount to campaign? What will you do differently from what others? What the First of all, right. The and you do so in ten seconds because yes. if it's more, you'll be campaigning. Yes. First of all, right. We we'll need to put down hate. The level of hate in River State is so much, right? And we can do that by offering the people of River State a truly representative government. And more than 95% of River State people, right, is yearning for that. And I cannot be deficient in the courage necessary to defend and pursue the aspirations of more than 95% of River State people who truly seek a representative government. I shall stand with them, I shall fight for them, and I shall ensure that we get that victory that accommodates all of us, that works for all of us. That is what we must do. And I have, as personally, I pledge eternal fidelity to the just causes and pursuits of every reverse man, woman, and child. And I pray that God helps me. Jumo, thank you very much for the time to be here. Thank you so Thank you, you Steve. Take your seat. Thank you. Thank you. Jumo Lulu, Lulu Briggs is a lawyer by training, one of the 23 aspirants on the platform of the uh, PDP in River State. And of course, uh, we've been talking about issues involved in the Rivers. Uh, uh, primary P World Congress is uh, last Saturday, uh, the complaints of 16 out of the 23 aspirants, uh, which is we like to believe is receiving attention now at uh, the national sector. Thank you so much for, for the time to be here. Thank you. Thank you for investing your time with us this Thursday. That's Focus Nigeria. The conversation about Nigeria continues tomorrow. Be sure to be part of it. My name is Ben Garuliba. Enjoy the rest of the day. Stay out of trouble, and I'll see you tomorrow.